Yo, what's up, beautiful people of YouTube? Welcome to Dom's Media Zone. In today's video, I'm going to do a tutorial in Adobe's Lightroom, the web or the cloud-based version. So there's two versions of Lightroom. There's one that's on your desktop and there's one that's the web-based one. I'm going to be looking at the web-based one today. And today's tutorial is for someone who's really new to Lightroom and just wants to learn how to navigate around in Lightroom, how to create albums, and how to add photos to the albums. I'll also show you how to manage your photos and work with the different displays in Lightroom. I'll explain to you how to automatically correct your photos and also how to use the profiles and presets in Lightroom to automatically adjust your photo for you. And lastly, I'll show you how you can export your photo or share it and also include your watermark on the photo. So if you're new to Lightroom and this tutorial is for you, stay tuned and enjoy. I will be making more tutorials in the future to show you guys how to use the editing functions and how to actually edit your photo yourself manually so you can get your photos looking really good and understand what all the functions in Lightroom are used for. So if you think this video and tutorial is for you, stay tuned and enjoy. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to today's Lightroom tutorial. So to begin, just to show you, there's two different types of Lightroom. There's Lightroom Classic and there's the Lightroom, which I call web because it's more web-based and you can use it on mobile and desktop. So I'm just gonna quickly show you the differences between the two. And the one I'm going to be doing a tutorial on is this one here, which is the Lightroom web version. So the classic one, you can only use on your desktop, whereas the Lightroom web, you can use on your desktop, mobile and web. Now the location, of the originals which is your photos this takes photos from your local hard drive whereas this stores the photos on the cloud so you have to move them from your local hard drive into Lightroom and then it's backed up in the cloud file backup on this one's not included on this one it's automatic depending on the plan you have they give you an amount of space that you can use up now the ease of use this one here Lightroom classic is most comprehensive meaning it's got more functions whereas this one's more intuitive and streamlined and then the organization and photo service this uses manual keywords this uses automatic tagging and intelligent search so that's the differences between the two and I'm going to be looking at the beginners tutorial on how to use the different functions and how to navigate around Lightroom web so let's begin by launching Lightroom which is this one here so you've got Lightroom classic has this little C next to it whereas the Lightroom web has just the letters LR in it so let's double click on that and then let Lightroom open up all right, now that Lightroom has opened up, the first thing you're gonna notice, it's gonna ask you to add some photos. However, if you click on this add photos button, it won't actually let you add the photos. It will guide you where to press. So you've got to open up the photos panel to add your photos. Now you will be able to use this function in the future, but only once you've created some albums. So I'm gonna show you how to create albums. So click on this panel and it opens up your panel on the left-hand side. So now we can just get rid of this by hitting cancel. So you can add your your photos into this kind of all photos folder which is by default the default folder for all the photos to go to or you can create a new album so let's go ahead and add an album so over here we're gonna create an album and it opens up this album name dialog box now I've got some photos from a day I've spent in London so I'm just gonna call it day out in London and then I'm gonna hit create over here and as you can see, I've got an album created now. So if I click on the album, it shows me that this album is empty. So what I want to do now is add my photos to this album. Now, if I click add photos, it opens up my file structures and I can find my folder that has all these photos. Now I'm working with CR3 files, which are raw files. This was taken with a Canon 90D camera. And let's say I want to import all of them. I'm going to select all of them by hitting Control A on a Windows keyboard. And then I'm going to click on review for import as you can see this opens up a preview of all the photos that were in that folder that i've selected and over here it tells me to review them so once i'm ready i'll click this add 16 photos button but if i didn't want all of them to be imported i can take some away let's say for example we've got two of the lion here so i'm going to get rid of one and we've got two from this china city here so let's get rid of one of them so now add 14 photos there's also a select all so you can select all unselect all select all again if you want to so i'm just going to uncheck Check these again and let's add 14 photos so now i'm going to click on add and you'll notice it's now loading up all the photos and just like that all my photos are now in my album day out in london if i wanted to create another album i could click on this plus button but for now let's just work with this one You'll also notice that the photos appear here in this all album. So this is all your photos. Whenever you've got different albums, you click here, you'll see 
every single photo in all these albums. So just to point that out, to remove a photo, let's say I wanted to get rid of one of them, let's say this one here, for example, I will right click on the photo and then here I can delete a photo. You've got also options like duplicate the photo, so you could create it twice. Uh, you can edit it in Photoshop from here, directly from here, or you can add it to one of your albums if you wanted to. But for now, I'm just going to delete this photo. It's asking me, are you sure you want to delete this from your Lightroom photos and from your albums and shares? I'm going to say yes. Now, do note that deleting this does not actually delete it from your computer. This is all web-based. This is based in the cloud. So over here in the top right-hand corner, you can see this little thing spinning now. It's actually synchronizing the photos. And this is the plan. I've got 20 gigabytes. So I've got 19.5 gigs free. And it tells me I've got 13 photos in one album right now. Also tells you when it's all done syncing and backing up. So currently all these photos are synchronized and backed up. All right, there's a couple of different views you can use to view your thumbnails here. So there's this little photo grid one. So this view is nicely compressed over here. So they're tight next to each other. There's no space between them. Then you've got this square grid over here where you can actually see each photo on its own little square. And also from here, you can rate your photo. So if you wanted to rate each photo, say for example, I think this is a great photo. I could give it five stars. If I think this one's okay, four stars. This one's a five star. Say this one's two stars. So you can kind of go and rate all your photos and later you can sort by the rating or only view your best photos that can be used for managing your photos at a later stage. All right. Also, another thing to point out is if you click on view over here, you've got different types of views that you can select. So for example, if I want to view the info of each photo and I select this one, it will give me the information. So by going to view and enabling this info over here, I can then select a photo and it tells me, okay, this was taken by a Canon 90D. The lens I used was a 24 millimeter meter lens tells me the ISO settings, the aperture stop, and also the shutter speed. So it gives you all these kind of settings. You can give your photo a title here and the location if you wanted to put where city you took it in and all these things here. That's really good to know. If you need to find out more about this photo, you can go ahead and click this info. For now, I'm just going to switch that off. And then the last view is over here. You've got a view of the whole photo with this little ribbon at the bottom. And using this ribbon, you can jump to the next photo quickly and easily you can remove these photos if you wanted to using this ribbon. So this is a great way when you first import your photos to preview each one of them, delete the ones you don't want to use. All right. And just to show you, if you do not see this ribbon, there's a little button in the bottom right hand corner here. It's called hide film strip. So they call this ribbon the film strip. So if I click on this, it will actually hide it. And then with my cursor, I can jump to the next photo or the previous photo. But let's show the film strip for now. And then let's jump into our square view. This is the one I've been using most of the time time to sort my photos out. All right now if you find that these icons are too small for you you've got this little slider on the bottom right hand side here it's called the grid size so here we can actually move it to the right to adjust the icon size so if you want to make your thumbnails or icons a little bit bigger you can go all the way up to that size and then this is really cool because you can view your photos quite clearly now and possibly if you're working with tons of photos if you've got hundreds that you shot you might want to make this a bit smaller it's all up to you how you prefer it. I usually keep them quite big so I can see what I'm working with. All right, also down here in the bottom left, you've got the sort options. So if you click on it, you can actually sort these photos by different criteria. You've got things like capture date, modified date, your file name, your star rating. So for example, we rated this one. So let's sort it by star rating. And you could see it puts the best photos up on the top and the ones haven't been rated at the bottom. So th this is just kind of like a sort filter that you can use to sort your icons and your thumbnails of the photos. All right, on the top here, you've also got a share option. So this is if you've made any edits to your photos and say you're happy with the way they look and you think they are finished now, you're done editing them, you can actually export them using this option here. So you can export it using the original or a JPEG full size, 100% quality, for example. So these are raw files, but if you wanted to export them as a JPEG, you could easily and quickly do that here. There's also other ways to do this by when you're editing the photo, you can then go to file and export. And uh, from here, you can also also edit it in Photoshop before you export. So this Photoshop is quite cool. If you click on it, it will open that photo in Photoshop, let you do your adjustments. Once you save it and close Photoshop, all the adjustments that you've done in Photoshop will be imported back into this photo. So if you do use Photoshop, that's one way to use it to quickly import the adjustments that you've made. Right. Also in the top right hand corner here, you've got a help button where you can basically start going through some tutorials, add your album, create an album, edit a photo. It gives you a whole bunch of 
of tutorials as well, tells you about auto settings and so on. So today's tutorial, I'm not going to show you how to edit a photo from beginning to end, but I will go through all the settings at a later video. But for today's video, I will show you something really cool, how you can just automatically kind of fix your photos up. So let's go ahead and let's say, for example, let's pick this photo of this bridge. And then to start editing your photo, you've got this little edit page over here. So go ahead and click on this edit page. And as you can see, it opens up your photo in the main window. Now, this is where you might want to hide your film strip so that it makes the photo a bit bigger and you've got more visibility of the photo. All right, in this edit page, just to break it down for you, this edit page has a whole bunch of different sections in it and it's got the light adjustment section. So using all these, you'd be adjusting all the lights in the photo or the exposure. Then using this tab, you'll be adjusting all the colors on this photo. So like the temperature, the tints, you can adjust each color channel, which I will do in a later video. In the next video, we'll do the light and then in the following one we'll do color in the following one we'll do the effects and details together and the geometry so next one you've got is like effects you've got textures and sort of things where you can clear your photo a bit you can change the texture make it dehazed and add grain if you wanted to and then up next you've got the detail which is like sharpening and noise reduction optics is a really cool one so let me show you optics right now so that we don't cover it in the future videos but basically depending on what lens you use sometimes different lenses have different issues they've got things like you know they stretch a bit if it's a wide angle lens you can get that fisheye look or some colors maybe not exactly right so by enabling this lens correction what it does is it automatically pulls in your lens details and the software fixes that lens correction for you so it takes the kind of weaknesses of your lens and adjusts it automatically for you using the software and then over here you can actually select how much of that you want to use so say it fixed it a hundred percent but if i wanted to maybe not fix it as much I would change this to a lower value. If I wanted to use it to its full maximum capacity, I'll make this 200. And at 200, this honestly looks pretty good, but I tend to leave it at the default 100. And over here, you've got something called lens vignetting. So this is in some cases, certain lenses do make the corners or the edges a little bit more darker or too bright, depending on the lens. That's to do with the reflection of the sun and the shape of the lens. So you could use this to correct it. So as you see, if I increase this a bit more, my edges get a bit brighter. So why I'm showing you this option first in this tutorial is because before I start editing any of my photos, the first thing I do is come here to the lens correction and just do this enable lens correction. Why I do this first is because once you enable lens correction, it does tend to adjust the light of your photo a little bit to correct the lens. And then that would then give you a good starting point to start adjusting the lights afterwards. If I adjusted the lights first and then came and did this, the photo might be too bright or too dark. And then I'd have to go and readjust all the lights. So I usually do this section first before I do anything else. Now, lastly, chromatic aberration over here, that's to do with the way the light passes through the lens. And sometimes it can give your image like bit of a weird color around the edges and so on so you could use this to correct that i usually just switch that on it doesn't hurt to have this on and let this optics panel correct as much as it can so now that i'm going to close this this optics panel we've discussed but what i'm going to show you now the easiest and quickest way if you don't really want to edit the photo on your own because it can take a bit of time to do so if you're in a hurry and you just want to correct your photo really quickly the best thing to do is using these functions over here so over here you've got a function called auto settings if you click on this the ai of the lightroom will adjust this photo for you automatically so i'm going to go ahead and click that to enable it and as you can see it has corrected the light and maybe a bit of the exposure if you actually want to see what it's done you can click on the settings so it took down the highlights increased the shadows and so on so it did this for us automatically so that's a really cool thing to keep in mind now another thing with the navigation just to show you there's a button down here that says show original so this is your before and after button so if i click on on this you can see before we've corrected the optics and that the auto adjustment the photo looked like this and this is the after so before and after before and after you can see this button the shortcut for this button is your backslash on your keyboard so if i click backslash backslash it shows me before and after all right, another cool option here, you can make your photo black and white just by clicking this. If you wanted black and white photos without really doing anything, there is a button here called black and white, which you can click or unclick to bring back the color. And then over here, the last thing I'll show you on this editing section is this presets over here. So second last thing, I'll show you the profiles as well. So the presets, you can use a list of predefined presets that are given to you by Lightroom. So Lightroom gives you a whole bunch of stuff that you can use. So for example, let's say, we 
we want to go for like a vintage style look for this photo, I would then expand this here and I can hover my mouse over each one of them to see what it will look like. So this looks kind of very old school, like it's an old type of photo now and it applies the different presets that Lightroom does provide you with. So this one looks kind of very old or if say for example you wanted a futuristic look, you could go and hover your mouse over these and then it would show you the different kind of looks that they've preset for you. So that's really cool if you also don't want to do too much editing, if you just want to apply a preset to your photos. It's also got like color, creative presets, black and white portraits and so on. You've got a ton of here so go ahead explore them. For example high contrast and detail, just high contrast on its own bright, neutral, you've got all sorts of presets here that you can use. Once you want to select one of them, just click on it and it will apply it to your photo. And then down here, you've got this thing called profile, which are profiles given to you by Adobe. So you've got the color profile, landscape, portrait, standard, vivid, depending on what kind of photo you took, you might want to use one of their profiles. You've also got the monochrome one. And then over here, if you want to actually see more of these profiles, there's a search button and they'll show you like a preview of what the profile looks like. So then you can actually add them to your your favorites if you wanted to. You've got things like artistic profiles and modern profiles and all sorts of stuff where, for example, if you like this one, you could go ahead, click on it, and then you can apply the amount of these special effects of this profile that you want to add. So these are all the kind of automatic functions that you could use to adjust your photo. Let's now show you the before and after, before and after, and this is without us pretty much doing anything here. That's how you would use this automatic functions here in this edit tab page over here. All right, next thing to show you is down here in the bottom corner, you've got things like comments. This is if you shared your photo on some kind of shared album, which I didn't do yet, but you can share your albums with other people using the share function over here. You could basically invite people to your album or get a link that you can share with people down here. So this is if they leave you comments on this photo, you can review the activity here. And then over here is where you can assign keywords. So for example, I could call this Tower Bridge. I could call this London. I could call this the Thames River. I could assign keywords so that later on when I want to search for specific types of photos. If I've got lots of them stored, I can go here and just search using the keywords. And then also down here is the info page, which I showed you where you can enable it earlier using the view and then info. So this does the same thing. This I button over here gives you the information of the photo itself. Now you can switch that off by clicking I again. And then once you're done editing your photo to return to it, you're pretty much already in the default view. To return to the grid view, you can go here. And as you see, it's already applying the photo settings that we've used and then if I wanted to export this photo I could right click on it export this photo I can choose JPEG large which is the original I could click on export and then choose all the settings manually if I choose to do the settings manually, one cool thing is it does let me include a watermark as well. And it's got this little customized watermark button over here. So if I do click on this, it's actually giving me an option to do either text or graphics. Graphics is cool if you've already got like a predefined PNG of your signature. You can easily create one of these. But let's say we take the black one, for example. And as you can see, it adjusts it to black over here. And it gives you anchor points, which are where in the photo do you actually want to put your watermark. So I can select this is the layout of the photo. If I wanted it on top here, I would take this one. If I wanted it in the top left corner, I would take that one. And then here you can adjust the size of your watermark. So I normally tend to leave mine at seven, but that's all personal preference on how you prefer it. You can also change the opacity so not to make it so strong in your photo. And you can do horizontal and vertical offsets, which just means that it moves it around the screen. So you can actually position it exactly where you want it to be. If you don't have a graphics predefined, you can go to this text option option here and over here you can actually type whatever you want to type into your watermark and the nice thing is you can select a different font so you can choose whatever font you want to use let's say for example let's just take this one as an example and then over here you can change the color so that this is more visible and likewise I can increase my opacity so we can see what it actually is and there we go Dom's Media Zone you created your own text watermark over here so it's a really cool little feature and then once you're done you can just click on done select where you want to export your photo too. So let's say, yeah, you take a quality as well. So you could make the photo less quality if you didn't want really large file sizes. But in my case, I just leave it at 100%. And then you can choose your file type over here as well. And then the dimensions of the photo, do you want it small, custom or full size? I'm going to leave it at full size. There's also more options here. Like do you want to include all the metadata, which is all the shooting information like the ISO and so and so. I'm just going to leave that all. And then once you click export photo, you can 
pick where you want to export it to. I'm just gonna say desktop, select folder. And as you can see, it says here exporting photo. And then what will happen is you've now got a copy on the cloud and you've got a copy on the desktop if you want to use it or share with anybody else. And that in a nutshell is how to navigate around Lightroom, the web version, and how to preview your photos and how to just basically do automatic adjustments like we've seen over here using these edits over here. That's it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this tutorial helps you out to learn how to use Lightroom. And if you did like this video, do give me a thumbs up and do consider subscribing to this channel. It helps me a whole lot and I'll be able to make a whole lot more videos to come in the future. So thank you for watching. Stay safe, take care and goodbye. Thank you.